Enterprises are buying hardware again and not telling anybody. Let's talk about that. Welcome to the Cloud Computing Insider. This channel explores the ins and outs of cloud computing without an agenda or following into the narrative set by big tech marketing. We look at what works, what does not, and the actual value of this technology in a balanced and information forward way. If that interests you, please subscribe, like, and comment. I'm your host, David Linthicum, author, speaker, cloud and AI architect, top 10 cloud and AI influencer, B-list geek, and over the hill mountain biker. Let's get started. So check out the article linked in the description. Uh, it's and it was, by the way, a topic that was mentioned, you know, probably half a dozen times by different uh, tech publications, even business publications. And I thought it was very interesting. So new research from Liquid Web has suggested dedicated servers are not only holding steady, but gaining traction in certain enterprise circles. And so we've been talking about this for, you know, a number of years. I think enterprises are back uh, getting in back to the groove of buying physical servers and and hosting some of the stuff on their servers because of the cost to control advantages that the physical servers have. Now, sometimes it's going to be, you know, private cloud operating systems. Some, sometimes it's going to be traditional operating environment where they're just running virtualization, Linux systems, things like that. And so this has been a really kind of an uptick that's been occurring kind of in secret uh, for the last five years. And one of the other things the study found is that most people are, you know, keeping this uh, hushed up. And so, you know, even whispering this to me, uh, if I'm talking to a client. So, you know, what are your expansions? plans and go, well, I'm moving to dedicated hardware. Okay. Like it's a speakeasy or something. So <laughs> it's an interesting uh, time to be involved in this IT profession. So the study finds that 42% of IT professionals move workloads from the cloud back to dedicated servers in just one year. And nearly half of the IT teams face surprise cloud costs of between $5,000 and $25,000. Dollars, and I mentioned that in my uh, insider's book. Uh, people are paying two to three times what they thought they were going to pay uh, paying for cloud ten years ago. So either they underestimated it uh, or got bad information, but they're reeling from the cost of cloud, not necessarily reeling from the quality of the service. That seems to be perfectly fine. But the fact of the matter is, IT systems can't exist if the IT resources aren't, uh, you know, spinning out of control and they really have no, no control of the prices. In other words, they're going to pay what the cloud providers are asking them to pay. So dedicated servers dominate in, in government, finance, in IT, where uptime and compliance are critical. So the two reasons that this is occurring now is uh, low latency. In other words, they're, they're trying to get to a lower latency for many of these systems, such as AI, where they're moving massive amounts of data in and out of these servers. And obviously the cloud providers are, are asking for ingress and egress fees, which are amazingly expensive. And so if you own your own hardware, and you own your own network, um, bandwidth is virtually free, storage is virtually free, uh, that's gonna be a much more cheaper proposition. And so that's why they're owning those stuff. And so the cost, of course, is probably the biggest issue there. And also compliance of uh, the rules in terms of how we're protecting privacy and data, you know, depending on the country that you're operating out of, are changing quickly. And they're going to demand that PII information and other personally identifiable information and everybody's yelling about their privacy now, which is probably a good thing, that they're going to demand more control, you know, over the physical servers. And obviously, if you're in uh, working with a public cloud provider, uh, I'm not worried about your data getting absconded, but you know, in Europe, for example, they're very uh, they're they're very aware of the fact that many of the servers that are operating in the United States, which may host you know some of their data, so, or some of these European companies, uh, can be subpoenaed uh, by U.S. law enforcement. I'm not sure if that's going to happen, but I understand where they're coming from in in terms of a suspicion of that occurring. Uh, so geopolitics and all that kind of stuff is is making uh, many of the companies outside of the United States a bit skittish about leveraging the public cloud providers, and perhaps for good reason. So we'll break the study down a bit. So dedicated servers versus cloud infrastructure, persistent demand for dedicated servers is back. So 86% of IT professionals reported continuing reliance on dedicated servers in certain industries like government, and this was 93%, IT 91%, and finance 90% continue to prioritize dedicated infrastructure, you know, for its reliability, lower latency, uh, and compliance benefits. And we already, you know, kind of discussed that. So in other words, cost 
cost and compliance, I guess the two C's, hopefully, yes, two C's, uh, are really kind of driving the move back to uh, dedicated servers. So also, as we talked about on this show many times, there's a migration from cloud back to dedicated servers or really kind of repatriation that's going on right now. Also, it's a it's a poorly kept secret. Uh, most enterprises are doing repatriation. They just don't talk about it. And for good reason, because at the end of the day, you're basically uh, proving that you made a mistake. In other words, you move stuff into the cloud and that was not the right place to put it. And now you're putting it back where you found it or putting it back on cheaper more controllable platforms. So 42% of IT professionals have moved workloads from the cloud back to dedicated servers in the past year, you know, and again, due to concerns over, and then nearly half, 46% faced unplanned cloud-related expenses between $5,000 and $25,000. So that's no good. So that's why they had to uh, look for other alternatives, including dedicated servers. So why is this happening? Why do dedicated servers still matter after all these years? In other words, buying your own hardware, I think, was, um, was we were told 15 years ago, was not necessarily a good thing to do, CapEx versus OpEx costs and all that kind of stuff. And suddenly it's back in vogue as something that's going to be an architectural option for many enterprises. Well, the key advantages of dedicated servers, of course, are going to be full control and customization. Uh, so in other words, um, 55% of the organization cited you know, that is a reason for doing it. And the customization thing is is interesting because, you know, obviously if you're, you're allocated a virtual server on a public cloud platform, you can customize it to a certain extent, but you don't have access to the native operating system. You're obviously operating in a multi-tenant environment. You're getting limited by that. And so many of these enterprises out there certainly that are looking to move to AI-based systems where customization and tuning is absolutely going to be imperative you have control over those systems to get the most value out of them, are looking at that as a reason for leveraging dedicated servers. Uh, network performance, we talked about lower latency. In other words, if we're not having to go over the open internet to get to our servers, uh, we're going to get better performance it's, if it's down the hall or with a co-location provider, a managed service provider that may be a few miles away. Uh, so, you know, that's going to be a key driver as well. Predictable pricing, that's the big one. Uh, cloud providers have priced themselves out of the market in many instances. And, you know, sometimes that's a self-inflicted wound that many of the enterprises have done as well. So in other words, everybody's complaining about the pricing of the different cloud providers and, and they move, willingly move thousands of applications into the cloud and they had no optimization of those applications to take advantage of the cloud native platforms. And so they're paying the price for it. Uh, and then superior physical security, critical for sensitive data and uptime. So in other words, you can actually see, touch, hug your servers. Uh, and so there, if you have sensitive information on that, and certainly if you're under compliance issues, in other words, people are going to audit you, you can show them the physical servers where that's a bit more difficult to do with the cloud providers. In fact, in most cases, it's impossible to do. You're not, you're not going to have access to the physical servers where your information is stored because in many cases, it's a multi-tenant environment. Um, they may not even know your stuff is stored. It goes into a big mix of things in terms of storage, compute, things like that. And that could be a problem for some companies that have, uh, you know, very critical compliance issues and are dealing with very strict compliance rules and regulations, you know, as they're doing in, in Europe uh, now, possibly the UK, and certainly aspects of it in the United States. So many professionals view dedicated environments as essential for performance, intensive workloads, compliance, and security. That's really kind of the bottom line. In other words, it's not an option anymore. In many cases, if I'm doing architecture, you know, they'll tell me, um, you need to come up with a dedicated server infrastructure. That's the limitations that are put on the architecture. Normally, when I start architecture, you get into the optimum, uh, to the most optimized architecture. It may include, you know, clouds and you know, hybrid-based systems and private clouds and dedicated servers are going to be part of the mix. And in many cases, just like, you know, you know, sometimes when I was doing architecture, you know, say 10 years ago, they would limit me to just using public cloud providers. In other words, they're not going to use dedicated servers. They made a, stra a strategic decision to move away from them. Now, in many instances, the architectures are being limited around the use of dedicated servers. So in other words, they're saying, you know, any kind of an architecture that you come up with is, is going to be good, um, but it has to mostly, mostly reside on, on servers that we own. So, of course, there's some cloud infrastructure challenges here as well, since most of this is going to be coexisting uh, with existing cloud uh, products. So 32% of IT professionals feel their cloud budgets are wasted 
and underutilized uh, for uh, features or capacity. And I think what people are coming to the conclusion on is that, you know, even though these public cloud providers have an amazing number of servers, uh, services, excuse me, Amazon Web Services, by the way, they launch a service every week. Uh, And certainly reInvent's coming up. I'll be there. Uh, They're probably going to launch thousands of things and ways in which they're augmenting their platform. So it's a very innovative platform, but most of that innovation and most of those advanced service services, including AI, many of the enterprises aren't using, and so they're just using common storage and compute platforms, common pl- uh, you know common platform services, things like that, Intel-based stuff, Intel-based cores, you know maybe some GPU utilization, things like that, and they feel they're paying for the R and D, and they are actually they're paying for the innovation that's occurring in these cloud providers that they're never going to use. And so there's a bit of disillusionment around that. So disillusion with cloud services is growing as cloud flexibility doesn't always align with cost predictability or control needs. So they're asking the providers to give them certain functions and also give them certain price breaks and also work and play well with their existing infrastructure better, including some of the other cloud providers that they're able to leverage, sovereign cloud providers, special purpose cloud providers, things like that. And I don't think the, pri- the public cloud providers are listening. Uh, at least I haven't seen them listening. We'll see what happens this year. I think many of them are, you know, open to you know, hearing the conversations now and not not considering everything as uh, as a, a must to put, uh, you know, all of this, all of the enterprise systems into their walled garden. Now they understand they're probably going to have to work and play with other platforms. It's going to be them in a many, you know, different heterogeneous architectures, including dedicated servers and edge computing and GPUs as servers and, you know, different cloud providers, sovereign clouds, all the micro clouds that are coming out there. So it's going to be a big bunch of stuff that we're using because people are going to pick the platforms that are going to be most optimized for their workloads, inclusive of AI. Cloud's going to be part of it. Public cloud providers, Amazon, Microsoft and Google, uh, they're going to be a piece of that, but you know, I think uh, uh, it's going to be a diminished piece, uh, piece over the next five to ten years, and we, we're seeing that now with uh, the way the market is reacting, you know, to the companies in general and missing quarters, uh, things like that. So the idea that public cloud providers are going to be able to grow in perpetuity, I think, has been tossed out the window. Now they're going to have to battle it out for their role within the enterprise, like all the other providers out there. So what about the future outlook for dedicated servers? Well, 45% of IT professionals predict dedicated servers will become more relevant by 2030. I, I think that's going to be the case. I think in many cases, you know, people are finding it just easier to buy a physical server. It's certainly much cheaper. And also the days of people say, well, I don't want to own an enterprise data center and hire data center people and, you know, all that kind of stuff. No one's doing that, by the way. We talked about this in the show already. They're, they're using managed service providers and co-location providers, which in essence are data center rental systems, and people are operating those servers under contract. So you're never really going, you have access to your servers, but you're never really going to have to see your servers each and every day. Other people who are skilled in that are going to be able to maintain it. They're going to lease the equipment, you know, with the dedicated servers. You're typically not going to buy and depreciate that unless you need to. And so the complexity in terms of doing things using dedicated servers, you know, over the last 15 years since kind of Clouderize has gotten much cheaper and much more turnkey. Uh, So the days of spending, and I did this, you know, my role as startup CEO, you know, $10 million on on buying dedicated, you know, servers and hardware and then getting uh, data center space to run them are long gone. Uh, You're going to be able to depend on other people to take care of that for you. So in 53% consider them essential to modern infrastructure, dedicated servers as well. However, 13% still see dedicated servers as obsolete. And and that's really kind of coming from the whole cloud bias stuff. So we were told that everything is going to move into a public cloud provider. So you better better pick one um, and start moving in that direction. And now it's going to be much more complicated than that. And it's got to be because... If we move everything into a single public cloud provider, we're going to be wasting a huge amount of money and also are going to be using an, an under-optimized architectures because obviously the cloud can, you know, a cloud provider can do some things well, but not everything well. So what are some broader observations here? Well, dedicated servers are increase, increasingly viewed as complementary to cloud servers services rather than being replaced outright. I can't stress that enough. So in other words, I'm not 
asserting here that we're going to move everything back to dedicated servers from public cloud providers, public cloud providers are going to still play as a, a, a role within architecture. And they do things amazingly well, and they have some awesome services there. They're the easy button to do AI, they're easy button to set up storage system, the easy button to set up things like a data lake, all that kind of stuff. But they're not always going to be the most cost efficient uh, and um, High, highest performing service out there and people that kind of need to consider that you have to consider and open your mind to everything out there that are architectural options so many professionals realize that cloud often runs on someone else's dedicated servers of course people i've heard that argument a few times validating their continued significance in the infrastructure yeah of course i mean cloud providers use hardware <laughs> they're, they're running it on many of the same hardware systems that we can buy you know, uh, from the hardware providers, Dell, HP, uh, you know, all the Lenovo, all the companies that are out there. So that is always going to continually be the same. But the problem is if you're using a public cloud provider, your hardware is going to be out of your control several thousand miles away, and you're not going to get the same value and the same performance out of it than if you owned your hardware in a physical data center and a physical hardware stack that's going to be very close to where you're using the data and where it's going to provide you with much better performance and much better cost efficiency. So this is something we're going to see over and over again, you know, where in essence, the new dedicated servers are going to be the new cloud. So, uh, which is back to the future kind of stuff that's happening in the industry right now. So the rising cloud costs, compliance requirements, physical security, and performance needs are really what's propelling organizations to reevaluate cloud adoption and move critical workloads back to dedicated servers. And it's not a bad thing. And you can do that in such a way where it's gonna have significant cost advantages, even though we're gonna to have to manage the architectural complexity because of the heterogeneity of leveraging physical servers, also public cloud providers and many public cloud providers and different kinds of cloud providers with sovereign clouds and special purpose clouds, AI clouds, things like that it's going to get us to a much better place. And we just have to know how to manage the complexity of the heterogeneity. And, and there's lots of ways we can do that um, where we can manage it very much uh, as well as getting close to as well as a homogenous environment where, where everything is the same. So we're going to have to deal with everything being different. And there's ways and architectural approaches you can use to make that much more worth your while in terms of cost efficiency. Well, anyway, heavy topic, you know, this is uh, this is interesting how things are changing right in front of our eyes. I've been watching the change for the last five years, uh, did a lot of writing and speaking about it. And I think a lot of people uh, did not believe it. And now they believe it. And I think that we're going to keep watching this market and see where everything is going to be going. So don't forget to like and subscribe and check out my other videos on this channel, as well as my other YouTube channel, Dave is not AI. Also check out my InfoWorld Cloud Computing blog, my 100 plus LinkedIn learning courses, and of course, my generative AI architecture course out on Go Cloud Careers. And finally, my latest book, An Insider's Guide to Cloud Computing. So until next week, stay very, very safe. Later.